Alright, yesterday we talked to you about focusing. And today we'll talk to you about how to focus. And this is the hardest part. Like, how do you get your play up to the point where it's me, your expectation, or your hope, your desire? And we can talk about short term goals. When we talk about short term goals, we're talking about a goal to be achieved within one month. Okay, and we want a measurable goal. Something with a number, like weight loss, um, you want to get in shape so you can jog around the park, you can time yourself, like a faster run. Okay, and you want to have a measurable quantity. Um, sometimes the goal is, is something that's hard to measure, like I'm watching my back end. I want to change the way I set for my backhand. And so what you're going to do is you think about a goal like I want to change, I want to make my, back, my backhand a harder shot. I want to hit it flat. So I'm going to change the swing of my backhand. Okay. And I'm going to measure the swing, how my shot is based on video and how my, my points see the ball. So I'm going to watch myself play and I'm going to try to hit the ball on a flatter arc. So that, you know, it's something you can measure. And once you achieve something you measure, you need to figure out how you get there. What is your means to get there? Like, how are you going to get there? You can't just say, I'm going to fix my backhand, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I'm going to hit against the wall one day. Say, four days a week, I hit against the wall. 20 minutes. It's amazing. In 20 minutes, I could hit 100 backhands against the wall. Or more. So you're actually doing something significant. I will go and hit cross courts once a week. I'll go and hit cross courts. I will uh, go and play matches and use my one hand backhand. You know? And when you're talking about this means to a goal, if I went to a match and I played and I hit one hand backhand, this is practice. In a real match, and this is something that people don't realize, is every day is different. And that's something you have to think about in tennis. There is only today when you play. Like sometimes I go out and I'm playing really well. Everything works. So if everything works, I use my entire strategies to how I play. But sometimes you go out and something's a little bit off. Like my forehand body's a little bit off. So I can't hit that sharp angle of the body. So then I don't hit that sharp angle of the body. I hit the body deep in the middle of the court. I start pushing to the corner and I try to work my game back into the shot. You know? It's like when you go play basketball and you're shooting three pointers and you're just a little bit off, so you can't shoot the three, so you move it a little closer, you know, and use other parts of your game. The same thing about tennis, you have to find out what's working. And that's why I always tell my students, you have to start really slow. Slow forehands, slow backhands, slow volleys. Because when you hit the ball slowly, it's really easy to see what's working that day. Okay? So you, you combine your goals, you separate your practice time from your goal, your match time, and then we talk about long-term goals. Let's go six months. And by going six months, you're able to have like something at the end of this. That's like one season, right? So like. I think the USTA season in Hawaii was like uh, April to like July, you know, and then you have time to get ready for that. January to April, we used to be mixed double season, and we would pretty much be off in October to December. So October, December, I work on changing my game. I work on getting fit. From January to April, it's really hard to change my game. Like, I don't want to touch any part of my game. I'm just going to play. I work on my fitness. I'll keep playing. Right. And so long-term goals. You, you don't want to have a goal like, I want to beat my friend John in six months. Because you want to make your goals individual. I want my back to be flatter. I want my surf to be harder. I want to hit a flat surf. I want to acquire a new shot. Because if your goal is to beat John and you go out and you play terrible, and 
jump is awesome, you're gonna lose. So those kind of goals are hard to measure, it's hard to keep up, you know. And so you want to work on individual shots and put them together into a philosophy for a stronger match. Okay. This comes back to your mental toughness and your focus. Short-term goals and long-term goals are indicative of discipline. And what helps discipline is rituals. And routines. Now people complain to me, they want they want to win their matches, they want to do these things. And I'm like, well, what time's your match? 7 a.m. What time you get there? 6.59. What do you eat? I don't, I want to sleep. You have to ask yourself what's more important. You know, like I often thought it was funny that people are never late for work, but they're late for test matches. If you can get up to go to work and you're making the effort to play tennis outside of work when you're tired, then make the effort to be good at tennis. You know, if your match is at 7, you wake up at 6, you eat, you head out to the court, get out there, get out there at 6.30. I used to wake up at like 5.30, eat something, try to get to the court by 6, warm up a little bit. That's when I was super serious. Now, I know myself. I know if I just hit for 15 minutes, I'm okay. You know, and I have to make sure I eat something and I'm okay. Okay. But the key is to have discipline. I don't drink two days before a match. Because the alcohol stays in my body and it slows me down and it screws up my game. I try to sleep three days out from a match because I need to sleep. You know, I try to watch what I eat. Because if I eat too much or I get too heavy, I can't play well. You know. And if you're not willing to do these things with focus and discipline and rituals and routine, then you're not going to win all the time. You're not putting yourself in a good position to win all the time. If you don't win all the time, you have to accept that. It's your fault. You know? As far as rituals, we're talking about shot preparation and stuff like that, but we'll get into that in more detail. So the first thing we're talking about is focus. And all we're going to talk about for focus in your match is where we're breathing. Because breathing and heart rate are related. You breathe quickly, your heart rate will change. You breathe slowly, your heart rate will change. And test about emotional control. So we're going to teach you about emotional control first. And all you want to do in your next match is focus on emotional control because you're breathing. Are you calm enough between points? You can take a deep breath three times. That's the first level. As a focusing exercise, before your match, I just want you to think of the tennis ball. I want you to just go into your match, think of the tennis ball. And when I say think about the tennis ball, I mean think of the tennis ball. Think of the, the, of the, the, the uh, fur on the tennis ball, the fuzz on the tennis ball. Think of the patches of the tennis ball. Think about what the tennis ball looks like. Think of the pen, think of the Wilson or the number on the tennis ball and see how strong a visualization of that tennis ball you can get. Like, is that tennis ball so visual in your head? It's three-dimensional, it's staying through the air, it's what you hit every day. And when you think of that tennis ball and you strike the ball, like, when I strike the ball, my imaginary ball, it looks like my normal swing. Can you do that? And that's what we're gonna focus on today. So think of the tennis ball, and when you're in the match and you're freaking out, Look at the sky. Tell yourself what a beautiful day is to play tennis, because I bet your worst day of tennis beats your best day of work. Honestly, come on, we're playing tennis. Tennis is just a game. Games are meant to be fun. But this first focusing exercise is about deep breathing, three breaths, and focusing on the tennis ball. You can practice focusing on the tennis ball a lot of times. But when I'm playing really well and I'm about to return to serve, all I see is the tennis ball. And I see it thrown up in the, as a person. If it's, for me, I see myself throwing the ball up in the air. I see myself making an impact with a tennis ball, and the tennis ball is about this big. It's the size, it's the size of this room. You know? And I'm striking the tennis ball, I'm hitting the spin I want to hit, I'm hitting the shot, I'm hitting the shots I want to hit, I'm just thinking the tennis ball. And see if you can do that for your next match. And that's, that's our first exercise, the first level, our first lesson on mental toughness.